Sussex Partnership, NHS Trust, which has been the subject of a number of scandals, has in 2019 been fined £200,000 for the death of a suicidal teenager, Jamie Osborne. On the 6th of March 2019, Sussex Partnership NHS Trust, who provide care services at Lewis Prison, pleaded guilty to criminal charges brought against them by the Care Quality Commission, otherwise known as the CQC, for failures under the Health and Social Care Act 2008. The fine of £200,000 is not an inconsiderate amount of money. Jamie had tried a suicide attempt in the prison on the 18th of November 2015 and was transferred to the healthcare unit of the prison. It was a legitimate attempt as a resuscitation was involved. However, he did require medication, which wasn't granted, and being diagnosed with schizophrenia and suffering psychosis, a planned transfer to hospital did not take place. On the 12th of February 2016, Jamie used a bedsheet as a ligature tied to the sink taps in his cell, which sadly led to his death. As well as these failures, there were basic failures to assess the risks in the room he was in, the ligature points, and items which can be used as ligatures, such as the bed sheets. What happened next is that Sussex Partnership clearly pursued the psychiatrist involved in the care of Jamie, a Caroline Ardron. They required her to face disciplinary proceedings for gross misconduct, care failings attributed to the suicide. In her much publicised case, she challenged the process against her on technical points of the disciplinary policy to say that there is no basis to charge her with gross misconduct. She was initially granted an injunction by the courts against such disciplinary action. But this was later reversed in 2018 and the trust wrote to her to tell her in March 2018 she would face the disciplinary hearing. It has not been reported by media that she had left, nor did Sussex Partnership Foundation Trust publicise this. A check on her details on the GMC website GMC reference number 3322022 reveals that she has no restrictions on her ability to practice. Her responsible officer, who is the person who has revalidation control over her to make sure she is up to date in training etc, is the Chief Medical Officer of Sussex Partnership NHS Trust, Dr Rick Fraser. Her designated body, who is responsible for ensuring she is up to date, which is usually her employer, is Sussex Partnership Foundation Trust, and it's indicative that she still works for them. In other words, she was not disciplined or expelled for the death of Jamie and her failures, the demonstrable subject of the fine and criminal process the CQC brought. This is further supported as a Sussex Partnership senior staff list dated the 26th of March 2019 shows she was still working for them at that point. This is really what the media need to be more interested in. In other words, what's happened since Jamie's death? Who has been held to account? In not holding anyone to account, can this happen again? What are the triggers for how it might happen again? Who takes responsibility if it happens again, as chances are it will? What is first surprising to me, based on my experiences, is that the same doctor who was involved in the abuse and neglect of me when I was suicidal, is the responsible officer of Miss Ardron. Dr Fraser is the same doctor who is found to have neglected me with no medication for clinical depression for a whole year despite the fact he knew that I am depressed. I direct you to the videos I am depressed and the HADS tobacco. Also, much more worrying for the benefit of the public and Jamie's parents who must be in shock by this revelation that a doctor who has been at the forefront of the death of a patient in neglect continues to work for that NHS trust, as it seems. Also too, the responsible chief medical officer who has a responsibility for the proper certification of her and is her responsible officer. But more so that management, including those who were relevant head management of the time, for example, CEO Colm Donaghy, faced no repercussions particularly as he had been the CEO from June 2014, spanning the time of this awful tragedy. In February 2012, Jessica Philpott was found hanged at Millview Hospital 
after repeated suicide attempts, and again the hospital had not assessed ligature points. Inadequate care from risk assessment, in other words. In 2015, we had the case of Matthew Daly, where the parents were crying out for their son to be helped, as he was a risk to other people, only for Mr Daly to kill pensioner Don Locke in a road rage incident at Findon near Worthing. Again, Mr Donaghy was CEO at that time. We see this repetitive process, that deaths happen. The trust says they are learning from mistakes, only for them to keep happening time and time again, and CEOs moving on. How many deaths have to happen for it to really be the case they are learning? Following the fine, Paul Lelliot, Deputy Chief Inspector of Hospitals and Lead for Mental Health at the CQC said, Now the point is, how does Sussex Partnership have any real inkling to take necessary steps to care for people when another psychiatrist or carer in the trust will similarly fail, someone will die, but then similarly no management will be held to account for the oversight of those doctors? It means that there is a disjunct between the responsibility of senior management to prevent deaths and the psychiatry doctors on the ground who are daily coming into contact with patients. There will be no corporate manslaughter aimed at Sussex Partnership Foundation Trust. The controlling mind that caused the corporate manslaughter is diminished and it will keep on going on, simply as there is no nexus of responsibility otherwise. And why do these attitudes keep happening? Well, I think because of a number of reasons. Firstly, an organisation built up insidiously to protect itself rather than admit mistakes in cases like mine where they can get away with not making omissions for years until they are forced to under legal due process. The organisation protecting itself to one that is not fit for purpose. Secondly, an organisation that has at its heart its poor reputation at all times. It colours what it does. Thirdly, staff who can work to their own interests where it suits but not in the interests of patients. So this could be doctors lying about no need for medication, as with Dr Fraser in my case, to not deal with patients, or general use and abuse of their position as doctors to make decisions in their own interest. After all, everyone trusts a doctor, right? Fourthly, the poor attitude of not needing to take overall responsibility for cases such as Daly, Muller and Philpot helps perpetuate an ethos and attitude of self-protectionism. How was Miss Allen, the CEO, held to account for the death of Janet Muller? Only an apology to poor Janet's mum? Really? In the case of Jessica Philpott, Sussex Partnership's psychiatrist, Dr Sabine Mundinger, said, per a Daily Mail article, that if someone is determined to kill themselves, they will do so. Now this is despite the fact that Jessica was actively suicidal and should have been closely watched. Does this not show Sabine Munzinger's poor attitude? It's demonstrable of the poor attitudes of the staff. Next, an organisational attitude that will seek to protect the working relationships of staff one to another and those staff when things go wrong, above and beyond the Hippocratic caring oath a doctor has to his or her patient. I saw that with CEO Sam Allen protecting Dr Fraser for the abuse of me. The organisation being more important than those of the people it seeks to help. You can have what we give you, and if you dislike it and complain, well, there's always the highway. Another point is that staff feel they can't call anything out. In other words, NHS whistleblowing is problematic. An ex-staff member would not mention anything about members of staff in my case for this very reason, as it was explained to me. Next, the very existence of the NHS Trust as a public entity seems independent of the numbers of scandals there have been. The 10 murderer cases this Trust was subject to and the plethora of other cases since involving deaths in custody. This is different to other enterprises where this would not happen, where deaths caused by management oversight 
are not tolerated by that company and its structures. A knowledge that senior management staff are immune from prosecution for manslaughter or corporate manslaughter, as the historic cases have shown, means that proper responsibility is diluted. If you are not held to account, why have any proper true responsibility and accountability to prevent these types of deaths, other than instituting policies with staff checks and validation which clearly are not good enough and responsible enough given we see the repeats of these deaths again and again. Now, Sussex Partnership Trust have what is called a vicarious liability for Miss Ardron whilst she is in course of employment. So they accept her wrongs and this must mean equally that management must be acceptable of those wrongs. But the thing is they don't really, not least in evidence in their attitude to go on employing her. The admission they've given is just lip service to a prosecution by the CQC who control the trust's activities. Ms Ardron is just the part of the same system for which Ms Allen and Mr Fraser are part of. In response to the fine, the parents of Jamie Osborne said the following. It's just money. No. It's just money. It's just it taking doesn't really, from one department and giving to another. It doesn't really mean, it's not going to bring him back. It doesn't really kind of, you know, it's just numbers really. You know, it's, it's not justice really, is it? How bang on the money is that? It's true, isn't it? It's just money. And as it's not the personal money or reputations of senior staff and chief medical officers, it's sad to say that these deaths will keep on happening again. It is presumably also money from an already dwindling NHS budget for a service Mr Fraser has said is underfunded. So how would they or he care financially? And if it isn't their money that this fine has been paid from, why would Sussex Partnership care as well? The point here is that unless senior management can be made properly accountable for the repetitive deaths and abuses and ne neglect of patients in their care or custody, as in my case and a plethora of other cases, these incidents will keep happening and deaths will keep occurring. The problem too is the chair of the trust, Peter Molyneux, will not hold the CEO to account. He has a working business relationship with the CEO and he runs his own consultancy business regarding mental health patients and housing. It's not too hard to envisage, therefore, that he would not wish to rock the boat of accountability with the CEO for fear of tarnishing his relations with her to the extent it could affect his consultancy and business reasons for being in the NHS. The same is true of governors who are also local mind charity representatives. To be more accountable, they must direct their policies and procedures much more fervently to ensure it doesn't happen with many more checks and balances. To reiterate, would a money fine really help? As the parents of Jamie said quite correctly and succinctly and profoundly, absolutely not. It is just political money being passed around and it doesn't mean anything. Nobody would use Sussex Partnership Foundation Trust if they had a choice, as they have presided over the deaths of so many people in the cases I've mentioned and the 10 murder cases. We need a new mental health system. It has to change. This trust needs a total rethink of the way it cannot be allowed to self-protect itself. It needs to be much more open of its own failings with integrity so that god-awful mental health care can be improved in this country. Are we really saying that any political will for a public mental health system giving this associated excessive death toll mentioned and all the an unaccountability that goes with it is a price worth paying all these deaths were avoidable with proper accountability these people died because the trust management are not accountable